Good evening, Dungeon Masters, I'm Baron Durop. Have you ever wondered what goes into an actual manor house so you know what kind of rooms, furniture, and treasure you can put in a dungeon map of a Baron's estate? Well, now you get to find out. Last month in Germany, my family and I stayed a few nights in a manor house turned hotel, which I recorded a tour of. Hopefully by the end of this walkthrough, you'll have tons of ideas for quest hooks, stealable heirlooms, and magic items, and to have a better understanding of what goes on in a manor house to more authentically run political intrigue adventures. The structure we're looking at was originally a monastery built in the 1600s and purchased by a noble family for use as a manorial estate in the 1700s. It's recently been renovated and converted into a hotel and is used also for corporate and social events. Fortunately, much of the original construction of this manor house is still present. Near the front entrance of a typical manor house, it was common to have a salon, map room, or small library, and this manor house is no different. The purpose of these kinds of rooms was to provide an easy way for manor house residents to meet with dignitaries, professionals, or military officers and get straight to business without traipsing through the entire house. In this particular library, you can see an encyclopedia of various noble family pedigrees, as well as posters detailing the coat of arms for each noble family described in those books. Each one of these books contains the entire family tree of each noble house, and usually contains data going back to the mid-1700s, but some pedigrees here, however, go all the way back to the 1100s. If you recall from the player's handbook, the noble background description states that noble characters have a scroll detailing their pedigree. These scrolls would be similar to what is found in these books, but the scroll would only contain a character's family line, and not the entire family tree. Those scrolls could be verified by experts in heraldry who have access to heraldric encyclopedias like these if needed. Above the bookcases, you can see the coats of arms of the four noble corporations, which the noble houses are organized into. Oh, and uh, just one quick flex here, check out the coat of arms on this poster. Anyway, as far as quest ideas go, a thief coming in here and stealing a pedigree or any other ancestral information could have been used to forge a noble patent or line pedigree, making it easier to fake their way into higher society in a nearby kingdom. All right. Now up to the top floor. The halls here are filled with artwork and the top floor is filled with suites and hotel rooms. Considering there are people staying in them right now though, I won't be able to show you what they look like, unfortunately. I'll try and throw a few photos on the screen of the sleeping chamber my fiance and I stayed in. The top floor is where noble family would have resided and guests and other dignitaries would have stayed on the level below. This small seating area by the stairs has a chest and two matching armchair barrel thrones. The nobility who resided here would have used these very thrones to receive guests, but this furniture would have been sat on a raised platform in what is now the lobby downstairs. Obviously, these thrones are much less ornate than a royal's throne would have been. So we'll take a quick jaunt down the hall of the second floor and out the back of the building, where you can see a number of exits. The descending elevation entrance going into the basement was likely the servant's entrance into the old kitchen or storeroom. So if your players ever wanted to sneak into a manor house, Dressing up like servants and going through this sunken door is likely a solid option. The other entrance was for residents to exit into the rear garden. Going back inside and back toward the stairs, we pass a number of other sleeping chambers similar to the ones on the floor above where visiting guests would have stayed. And at the opposite end of the hall, next to the stairs, we come to the dining hall. You can see here that all the tables have been set for breakfast for the current guests. There's also a pair of dining extension rooms for additional seating, but historically these rooms were likely other sleeping chambers or perhaps parlors or keeping rooms off the dining hall. Renovations have added far more sleeping accommodations than would have been typical for this manor house, so the building needed more dining area. Behind this door here off the end of the dining hall is where the kitchen and dishwashing area is, which has all been updated with new appliances. However, historically, those rooms would have only had china, silver, and storage in the past. The kitchen would have been near that outdoor service entrance I pointed out earlier, and food from that kitchen would have been raised up to the second floor by way of dumbwaiter. I didn't go into the kitchen because hotel personnel were working and I didn't want to get in their way. 
Before we continue with the tour, I'd like to take a moment to thank this video's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who loves learning and wants to explore their creativity and learn new skills. Something I'm always looking for are unusual ways to level up my dungeon mastering or world building skills by reaching into different hobbies, and Skillshare didn't disappoint me. I started with Douglas Butner's series on how to freestyle rap, rhythm, lyrics, and delivery. While I'm obviously not not going to win any rap battles anytime soon, I found that learning freestyle rap word games and the pressure of a rhythmic cadence really enriched my on-the-fly world building. I learned techniques to rapidly recall evocative words to describe dungeons for my friends' D&D adventures. Do you have a specific skill you're trying to learn? Skillshare is a perfect place to start. From photography and illustrations, or graphic design and even entrepreneurship, you can find classes that will match your goals and interests. The first 1,000 people to use the link in the description will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare. Thanks Skillshare for sponsoring this video, and now back to the Manor House tour. So, on our way down to the ground floor, we can see various paintings in the stairwell of individuals related to the manor house. Now on the ground floor, this hallway will take us to the various other salons and sitting areas, which were now used as meeting rooms. This smaller salon in the back of the manor house has a cozy fireplace and a few curios and artifacts. These make for good conversation pieces to lubricate small talk among guests. Here's another parlor filled with various other paintings and plenty of seating. So notice how this lower level has lots of smaller meeting rooms. The layout of the manor home is constructed in this way so the house could host a large number of people, yet still maintain the intimacy of a smaller gathering. These partitioned rooms allowed for a dozen or so people to engage in conversation without the house party being fully disrupted with noisy banter, all while still being able to easily move between the various chambers to join different conversations as needed. Our modern day open floor plans were not in vogue in the era, and would have led to a lot of noise. To tack on some D&D questing theory here, if your players are tasked with tracking down or assassinating a key NPC at a royal ball, knowing which people are in which salon that might assist or witness a crime might be crucial information as the party does their worst business. Next we come to the ballroom of a manor house, which served an extremely important social function. Dancing was basically obligatory, especially considering that courtship in the era was just as much a romantic as it was a political endeavor, and this was one of the few times people could easily intermingle for that purpose. Commonly, any gathering which required more than a dozen people, be it for business or pleasure, often started with tea and cake in the afternoon, followed with a dinner in the evening, and then dancing in the ballroom at night. After an obligatory first dance, which was usually a waltz or a francaise, it was common to break into the various salons or parlors we've just toured through to have more intimate conversation. However, because the musicians and the acoustics of the ballroom, surprisingly, if you wanted to have a private conversation with someone, the easiest place to do this was in the ballroom while waltzing. Next we come to the final salon, where various curios and possible family heirlooms might be kept and displayed. It would be a shame if some of these magic items could be grifted by some murder hobos. Okay, so now a quick jaunt down this hallway, and that'll lead us to bathrooms and a boiler room, which is boring, so now we're on our way to the dungeon. Okay, it's actually not a dungeon, I'm just kidding, but this basement chapel is here so that the nobility could attend services with their guests without having to load everyone onto a horse-drawn buggies and go to a nearby church. I couldn't figure out how to turn the lights on, so we'll just have to use the light of the transom window in the back. But if you ever wanted to know if your D&D nobility would have a profane chapel in their basement where they worship some twisted demon, then the answer is yes. They absolutely would have. That would have been extremely likely. In the back of the chapel is a blocked stairwell that would have been the original exit to the outside, but it's now been sealed off by a patio which was added on at a later date. And since this exit door was locked, we'll have to go back into the main lobby to exit the manor house. Thanks for joining me on this Manor House tour, and hopefully you got some inspirational ideas of what you can put in your Manor House dungeon maps, and perhaps how you can set up a royal ball the players will have to make tons of performance checks through, all to get some juicy gossip or a magic item. If you'd like to help me make more content like this in the future, please consider supporting me on Patreon or becoming a channel member. Thanks for watching, Dungeon Masters, and until next time, good night.